Hello, and welcome to Six Degrees from Cannabis. I'm your host, Tori Rarick, PharmD and Holistic Healer. Each episode features a candid conversation about how connecting with the cannabis plant has enhanced an individual's wellness journey. Here to honor the plant, talk about healing, and have fun. Today's conversation is with a stoner who cares. Danny Oliveras of the Highlights Oasis proudly and truthfully shares about her relationship with cannabis and how it helps her in relation to mood and food. Listen to hear about her first experience with cannabis and how she got from overdoing it daily to cope with an abusive relationship to teaching others how to make the habitual a ritual. This episode also touches on incorporating cannabis into yoga practice for self-reflection and Danny's answer to her most asked question, how do I stop smoking weed when I'm bored? Let's go to the show. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today we have on Danielle Oliveras, who is a Miami girl living in LA. She's the founder of Highlights, an online and soon to be IRL, again, community, offering mindfulness tools, advocacy, and education for hashtag stoners who care. Danielle is a cannabis patient, advocate, and mentor who helps others shift their perspectives around our relationship to cannabis to make the habitual a ritual. Welcome, Danny. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm always like, don't say that because everyone says that. (laughs) (laughs) I totally feel you. I like, I feel you. Okay. Oh, two cards jumped out tonight, but I have to choose one. Choose one wisely. Okay. Left or right? My left or right? Right. Okay, take direction is our card of the evening. I've just pulled from my highly inspired Follow Your Heart Oracle deck, and I'd love to hear how you connect taking direction and your relationship with cannabis. And for the audience, this card is a horseshoe, a lucky symbol, but also brings in this imagery of the horse and how they're so strong. There are four circles like a compass marking each direction around it and Danny the floor is yours wow that actually works pretty well with my story (laughs) uh around uh kind of how I got to where I am with my relationship with cannabis but let's see taking direction I mean right away I've never shied away from speaking truthfully about my relationship to cannabis and definitely the first one in my family to be open about it and one of the few women in my friend's circle at the time that I started uh, consuming and being more open about how it helps me uh, so yeah I, w- I would say that I mean in my work I'm all about helping people change their minds and opening their minds around how it can how it may or may not help them so Mm. Um, that was special because I didn't even mention anything about the throat center and that's exactly what that card symbolizes Danny was able to see the colors which it had it was blue but um I love that you straight away just mentioned the communication aspect and talking about being a voice for cannabis and then also you know like patient wise it's it's a way to take back your health a lot of people mm -hmm. are at this point, starting to try cannabis when they're out of other options or the other options aren't working. And it's another way. It's like a reminder that there are options and choices in our health journey. So thank you for that. That's a great, great point too. Yeah. Let's get into your story. What was your original perception of cannabis and has it shifted for you? Oh, Definitely. I can't pinpoint how quickly it shifted exactly, but I do remember my first experience uh, mingling with cannabis was my boyfriend at the time, beginning of high school, he would smoke before school with his friends. And I remember I was that girlfriend who'd like check to see if he was high and, (laughs) and be like, why are you high at school? You know, and why do you have to be high right now? And I mean, I had a point. But at the same time, that quickly changed. You had a point. <laughs> um, but 
you know, it started that way. And then I tried it with him in a safe space and I immediately realized its potential to help me. You know, at the time it was for social anxiety and stomach issues. And now it's still for that, but it's definitely different. Um, and I always like to tell my whole story around cannabis and kind of how I got here because it's just really important <laughs> to talk about. Um, especially, especially when we want to know, you know, the full, full story. But um, I began quickly smoking daily after that. I was, you know, maybe 10th grade. So I was about 15. And towards the end of high school, I found myself in an abusive relationship. There was a real trauma bond <laughs> between him and I that was created around our consumption or more so held together through our consumption of cannabis. Um, since we both smoked as a way to cope with all of the feelings that we were having, um, me, my anxiety, and my body pain from, you know, the abuse, him, I can only imagine anger and whatever, you know, would bring him to be abusive to his partner at such a young age, even. And, you know, I, I was totally overdosing to cope, you know, and what I mean by overdosing, just to, because I know that word is, is really intense. It's just overdoing it for my body, you know, something that quickly, you know, I knew that it was this because it wasn't, it didn't feel good anymore. It just felt like something I was doing all the time. And I was doing it all the time. I was smoking from the moment I woke up. Sometimes even like if I woke up in the middle of the night, I would hit my bomb, you Mm. know, and it quickly became a negative coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. And so you know, a little after that, when I started to put these pieces together after the relationship ended, I seeked, seeked refuge, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, in in my yoga practice, both my asana, so the physical practice, and my meditation practice, and also other plant medicines. I remember that was kind of when I started to try acid and mushrooms and it wasn't trying to go from one substance to the other. It just kind of naturally happened that way. And, and ex- having experiences with these other medicines helped me kind of ask myself these questions, you know, <laughs> about, about my consumption. Um, and, and, you know, I wanted to feel safe in exploring them, you know, around, you know, around the question, why cannabis? And, you know, it was always easy for me to kind of cut myself slack around certain things like rest and taking care of myself which now as an adult is a lot harder and I always try to go back to that girl (laughs) um but uh I couldn't deny that cannabis did help me it helped me with like I mentioned my social anxiety it helped me with my depression specifically my mood helped elevate my mood um but also I just I realized, you know, I felt really good after just one hit off my bong instead of six bowls. Um, and, and, and that was okay, right? And to release really shame around that fact that cannabis did help me. Um, but I just needed to be honest about how much cannabis was right for me, depending on how I felt and what my exact needs were at the time. Right. Um, but now <laughs> I see cannabis, you know, as a wellness tool that it is just like meditation, just like yoga. And when we couple cannabis with mindfulness, they really work together magically to kind of keep us honest and in tune with our real needs. And that's why I love teaching about both because they're both incredible tools that just work. They just naturally go together. It It makes total sense. (laughs) No, it makes total sense. And I'm like most of us, I just fall in that in-between of consuming for medicinal reasons. And also because we love to get high after a long day, you know, or even a long task. <laughs> um, right. So you you good. Know. You want to relax. Those are all medicinal reasons too. Exactly. So that is my long winded answer, but I think it's important. I, I love that because what you were saying about overdoing it, it's like, cannabis is this amplifier and so even though like you really can't hide you can try for a while to like numb out but it's not really I my experience has not been that 
Um, if something like really needs to be addressed, it's not going to go away. The smaller things in life, like pers- in like perspective shifts, I really enjoy cannabis for that. But I think if there's something at your core that is not right, like cannabis is just going to keep bringing your attention to that. And so even though you were, I like the word overdose because there is such, there is such a thing for, for feeling that in your own body and knowing what your limits are. I like that you brought up that word specifically, because I think that's what some people are really scared about, but we know regarding cannabis toxicity that most likely people are going to be safe. However, there is a point where there are side effects. There are just things that don't feel so good. And yet still here you are an advocate for the plant. And it's all about your relationship and exploring that without shame. No, I mean, right. My only symptom, right. Of overdoing it wasn't anything, you know, corporal. It was more emotional. It was more of, mm-hmm. I started to, you know, I, I love consuming for my mood. So it, I realized that it wasn't helping my mood. It was actually making me feel bad or not making me feel bad, but like you said, amplifying the already negative feelings I was having as I was like coping, you know, right. with my own, with my own things. You know, I always say, you know, my connection, when my connection to myself is analyzed, then so are my consumption habits or whatever. However I feel about myself is how I'm going to approach everything, but especially the way I approach my cannabis use because of the role that it has in my life. And it, it's different in everyone's and I'm sure someone is going to listen to this and agree with and, and resonate with my story and resonate with why I consume cannabis. So I just like to be as open and honest as possible. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, this is like, I love it. I smoke weed all the time. But this could <laughs> but, happen in your relationship with the plant. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I definitely gotten to that point too where you know that you're overdoing it and still in that space being like it's okay that I overdid it I now know I now have more information and I'm gonna try lighter next time I'm gonna try something else next time like that is totally an okay place to be in so I just want to share some solidarity with that because I think there's such a stigma about it I really quickly, I just want to add I posted a reel the other day or like a few weeks ago but it was just saying like we don't expect our partners to be our everything. So why do we expect the same from our cannabis? Mm, that's so true. That's so true. I'll let everyone okay. meditate on that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned in that last answer, but if you could just give it to us straight, how does the plant serve you? Yeah, so it helps me with my mood, specifically around my depressive episodes. Uh, my anxiety, my gastrointestinal issues. I'm an IBS acid reflux girl. <laughs> um, I also have fibromyalgia, which, you know, who knows if that's directly linked to just my PTSD and anxiety and all of that. This is such a mental um, thing, but definitely helps me. CBD helps me a lot with my body pain that comes from that. But Aside from that, it's just connected me to my voice through my love for it and how much I believe in its ability to help us shift our perspectives about our world and ourselves. So, you know, it's, it helps me with that. It helps, oh, whenever I think about that, <laughs> I, it, it always helps me bring, helps me come back to ground and back to center the times that maybe it's not so easy. So do you utilize different cultivars and how do you navigate those different uses or have you found one that's really cohesive for like all of the reasons that you choose cannabis for instance like if you're trying to get out of a depressive episode is that the same thing that's really supporting your stomach and how do you navigate that well yeah so I'm definitely as far as consumption methods a flower and smoke girl and um, I usually, if I feel any, cause honestly, since consuming regularly, I've had a lot less stomach issues, but if I like drink one beer <laughs> or something, cause I'm really sensitive, like the next morning, my stomach will hurt a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll like corner a bowl of my bong and that'll be enough to soothe the cramps that I may be feeling or like help me go to the bathroom. If I feel like I haven't been able to go to the bathroom for a few days or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then same thing with mood. Like 
I know myself and if I smoke too much of, let's say, wedding cake, which is a strain that's really high in mercine. Uh, so that could give me, you know, my, make my body a little too relaxed and maybe mm-hmm. smoking too much of that <laughs> will um, keep me on the couch or not willing to get up and, and record something. <laughs> um, right. So that um, and tinctures, I've, I'm lucky enough to live in California. And so I have access to different things and I love a one-to-one tincture. So mm-hmm. that's equal amount THC to CBD. Um, that is really what helps me with my depression and anxiety yeah. like without having to get, you know, high. So again, it's just like so much of knowing yourself, which of course your yoga practice has supported you in. And then mm-hmm. that trial and error with your cannabis and, and then following those, those things that you found out but cannabis can be very gentle. I find her to be a gentle spirit. And so I think that there's room for that experimentation. Totally. And so how do you serve the plant, Danny? Oh, I mean, I guess I already, I feel like I answered that by speaking about it, speaking about it openly, um, not pretending that it's a one size fits all or that, you know, there's no room for error in its abilities. Um, but I think in a lot of how I treat it when I consume, so having designated area where I keep it, where it's out of the sun and cool, cool enough temperature. So, you know, we don't mess with the beauty of it. <laughs> um, I think by one always trying to have a more mindful relationship to it not abusing it I think of that so literally sometimes I'm like Mm -hmm. I I feel like I'm hurting it but obviously you know I'm only hurting myself in a certain way right (laughs) if I'm at that point but yeah I don't know I mean I don't know I I think mostly just in the work that I do I have chosen yes tell us about highlights yeah I mean Highlights is a brand, my brand, a community that I started about five years ago in Brooklyn, New York. And I was hosting CBD yoga classes. And, you know, now that it's legal, maybe I could talk about it. But <laughs> I was also hosting events on the underground market over there, um, hosting yoga classes and meditation classes. And really just always centered around destigmatizing the plant, destigmatizing its use and really coupling mindfulness education with cannabis education. Because, you know, the more we know, the more we, more comfort we feel, and we can share that. We'll feel more confident in expressing the truth when we hear someone saying that smoking cannabis makes you lazy or that it makes you stupid or what have you, you know, you'll be the first one to know, hey, or first one to feel confident and saying, hey, that's not true. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And, and so that's how that that's what I do with highlights, and I I host meditation classes now and talk continue to talk about uh, talk about it. But yeah, that that's what I do for Miss Cannabis. We love <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is exactly how I found you through the High Vibe community. Stoners who care, the Stoner Oasis. It just sounded like the place to hang out, and who doesn't want to join Danny for like a Monday Medi. I love when you call it a Medi and just be welcomed in your choice because um, I guess that's what I noticed for me in my experiences with you and highlights. It's just been like so welcoming. And even though I'm in it, there have been times where I haven't felt so confident about my, my choice around cannabis. And so to see smiling faces, happy people, sweet people who get it. That's the place to hang out. And I really appreciate you for that. Oh, yes. I'm so happy that you feel that way. Cause that's why I call it the stoner oasis. I want it to feel like an oasis, a place that you can also seek refuge and, mm-hmm. and feel safe and learn about yourself in a very safe way. Definitely. So what is the question that you get asked the most about cannabis and what is your answer? 
I had, I honestly had like three because I guess these all the time, but I guess the number one would be how do I stop smoking weed when I'm bored? (laughs) Oh, you know, it's like, it's like, I don't want that to be the only thing I do when I'm bored, you know, how, what should I do? And this is where mindfulness comes in when you can ask yourself the questions of what do you need in that moment? Kind of like, if you're a chronic overeater, for instance, mm-hmm. and you feel the the trigger to want to eat something, maybe you ask yourself, "How am I feeling?" or "Am I thirsty?" Right? Like you go through the, I always I always tell people go through the halt the halt method. Um. So, am I hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? Mm. And that one's one of my favorites because it's easy. And if those aren't maybe those aren't the questions that make sense for you, but it'll trigger something in you to you know, inspire you to, to ask other questions that Definitely. maybe make more sense. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. What are the other two questions? <laughs> the other two were, how do I know how a certain strain will affect me? And that's when I give them a good old terpene and cannabinoid lesson. Um, mm-hmm. And then how do I meditate the right way, which oh. is the right way, but there are many ways and you could find the one that's good for you. Totally. Oh, the board really gets me. That's interesting. And I'm like thinking about times where like I may have done that, but it really has become what you say that make the habitual ritual. It really has become that for me. And I I've recognized my triggers personally, like you were saying. So I, when I'm like on edge and I'm like yelling at my children, I'm like, Oh, I think I need a break. Like, okay, now it's time. Um, yeah, I guess I, I'm not so much a boredom smoker, but there could be a time and place in my future where I'll come back to that. That one has been a big question since COVID. Oh, um, sure. Since a lot more people started smoking even um, and this for anxiety and so they got used to, it, it mm-hmm. became habitual, right? Kind of like what happened to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's about like reconnecting with yourself and what what your needs are. Totally. And how cannabis can just be a part of the puzzle but not the not everything you know not your everything okay so what are your favorite resources Danny if someone's like I want to know more about cannabis where do you like to point them well of course highlight oasis um of course <laughs> but, but no um honestly I love HiVi. I think HiVi.life. I'm sure you'll leave any links um but HiVi is a great resource just have really covered a wide range of questions and um, resources for you already. But then of course, can occlusive. Um, they're a great resource for me. I'm just keeping up with legislation, keeping up with what's going on um, as far as cannabis, even in the world, because they talk about stuff happening all over the world. And they coupled with um, Kirsten from Almost Consulting. Uh, she works with cannabis brands for consulting but they created inclusive base and I think that's a great reference because when we're talking about mindfulness and cannabis and communities and advocacy is is completely a part of that and you know when we talk about the war on drugs in America we know it's the war on people of color and when it's 2021 and Martha Stewart has a cannabis brand and there are so many people with cannabis friends. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, sorry. Um, we, as consumers, have a responsibility and not to know who is out there outside of who is the most marketed mm. and who actually cares about us as people and the plant because the plant is for the people and there are a lot of people out there who don't see it that way. Um, and so we should support the ones who do. And so... Um, I actually want to share um, a guide that I created. It's a notion template. It's the three tools to keep it intentional. And it's a little guide that I made on three tools that people can use to keep their consumption intentional. And in there are some links like um, the Flirt Coalition and Can Inclusive and the Inclusive Base and just a few other things too. So hopefully whoever is listening. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that with our listeners. I will definitely be linking that below. And what if someone needed more personal attention? Yeah, so that's where I come in. Um, That's what I do on the side, running highlights. But my passion is really working one-on-one with people and listening to their stories and helping them 
um, on a one-on-one kind of basis of what exactly they need from cannabis and all parts of cannabis, maybe not just THC, but um, getting them to really dig deeper and find the best way to incorporate it into their life. And um, I actually have a free 30-minute call. Um, I also shared the link with you. Um, But just send me a DM too. (laughs) You're so friendly. Just DM her. I've done it. And now we're here. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously, DM me. I DM everyone. I'm all about the DM. (laughs) Yes. Okay, Danny, thank you for sharing your story. I think that's so important. Just at the top of the call, you got right into it. And I've been there in like so many parts of your story. I'm seeing myself in like truly an abusive relationship as a minor and um, just like thinking that my boy, none of my boyfriends can smoke and then having my own anxiety and my stomach issues and and then bringing in this mindfulness to my practice. And so I, I love this sacred mirror that you've held up tonight. Thank you so much. Is there anything that you want to share with the audience before we go? Oh, just that I'm really happy to have a platform to be able to share my story. Cause I think it's so important to hold up a sacred mirror. As you just said, that was so beautiful. Um, and just that if you are experiencing any shame around your love for cannabis or feeling overwhelmed with new legalization in your state or just having more access to it, but you want to um, feel safer in your exploration of it, don't be afraid of reaching out to people like me or Tori. Um, we live for this. We live for <laughs> helping. So, <laughs> And for the people and having other people feel really taken care of. So that's definitely my MO here. So you need that please reach out thank you so much have a beautiful evening oh, thank you you too Carrie. it's so much fun to talk to you as always <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in to six degrees from cannabis if you connected with this episode please share it with a friend who would benefit from hearing it too tap the subscribe button to be notified when the next six degrees episode is released You can find more information about holistic healing, the Follow Your Heart Oracle deck, and what I do by visiting ToriRerick.com. If you message us on Instagram at the number six degrees from cannabis, we'll be sure to message you back. Bliss be with you.